Hi, my name is Jen Osborne Elliott and I am the Animal Services Manager here at Wildlife Images. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about uh, baby birds and some of the main reasons that they come into us and what happens once they do get here and, and how we treat them. Uh, one of the main reasons that we get baby birds is uh, a lot of people don't realize when they don't need help. Uh, we tend to call that kidnapping and a lot of people just don't realize uh, that nature tends to kind of figure it out. Um, one of the reasons that people think that a baby bird needs help is they'll see it on the ground. And depending on what age it is, that may or may not be normal for that baby bird. If it doesn't have any feathers yet, if it's not moving a whole lot, it shouldn't be on the ground. Uh, in, in those situations, you'll want to give us a call. Uh, we'll talk you through a couple of scenarios. Uh, if it fell out of a nest, we'll want to make sure that it doesn't have an injury. So we're likely to have you bring it in. Um, if that baby has an injury, or even if it doesn't, we'll often put them in an incubator so that we can help keep them warm and, and monitor their progress. Um, in some cases, we'll try to reunite with the parents. And a lot of times that's actually very successful. There's a, an unfortunate uh, old wives tale where people think that baby birds and baby animals in general won't go back to their, or the parents won't take them back if they've been touched by a human, but that is absolutely a myth. They'll actually take them back. Uh, we've had success reuniting babies with parents uh, multiple weeks after they fell out of the nest or had some injury, uh, and the parents will still take them back. Of course, it's species dependent and individual dependent, but we're always willing to give it a try. Um, if they come in at that age, we tend to put them in one of our incubators. Uh, these were able to control temperature and somewhat humidity, and that'll help the tiny little baby birds keep with uh, temperature regulation, and, and we'll feed them uh, depending on how old they are. Some of the babies have to be fed every 15 minutes if it's a hummingbird. Uh, sometimes they're every um, half hour, um, and some of the older birds, when they come in, as we're starting to wean them off of the, the constant feedings, we'll bump them to one hour, and then two hours, and then three hours, and then we'll go part of the day uh, until they're finally able to self-feed on their own. If we get in a bigger bird that's not a, a tiny baby that doesn't have feathers or its eyes aren't open yet, uh, if they're a little bit bigger, then sometimes they'll come in because they're at that stage where we call them fledglings. And what that means is they're supposed to be hopping around and figuring out how to fly. Uh, it's a very vulnerable part of their lives where they, the parents will still normally be around. They'll, they'll dive bomb your neighborhood cat or whatever predator is trying to go after that baby bird. Um, and a lot of people think that those babies need help and more often than not they don't unless you see a, a physical injury or if, uh, if your cat brought it in. In those situations we always want cat attack birds to be brought to us. But if it's, and so if it does come into our care we put them into an enclosure kind of like this. Um, depends on the, the age of the bird but the fledglings will, or some of the smaller, we call them nestlings, um, we'll put them in here and we set up with different branches and They'll have a food bowl and a water bowl, and then we'll have them in our baby bird room, which we keep at a, a nice warm temperature year round. Um, we'll also put them in nests if they're at that age where they still need a nest. We make nests out of newspaper. We actually prefer these in most situations to the, the knitted and crocheted nests because these are really easy to, once they're dirty, we can just throw them away. Some of the nests we don't like as much because the, the little pieces where, they're, where the fabric is pulled together they, they're perfect little holes for nails to get stuck and we don't want a baby bird to injure itself. So we normally go with this. Um, but once they graduate from the nest, they'll just live in here. And then from there, they'll end up going into a larger enclosure. We have multiple songbird enclosures outside and we wanna make sure that they can fly and, and navigate and learn how to feed themselves. Uh, a lot of birds have very specific um, parts of their natural history where for example, a goldfinch. Um, some of the goldfinches will actually hang upside down from some of the plants that they eat the seeds out of. And so we have to make sure that they are able to hang. They have to have full function of their feet. Uh, they have to be able to recognize what a natural food source is and not just for the food that we offer here. So they go through a lot of different steps to make sure they're ready to go. So one of the things that we do with baby birds that do need a nest is we make them newspaper nests. And I, I figured I'd give you a quick demonstration. Um, we always teach our interns and our staff how to do this. You need two full sheets of newspaper. And one important thing that a lot of people don't realize is you want space. You want air in there to make it so that they, they, the temperatures will remain similar. And so even though this doesn't look very pretty, this is going to be a more ideal setup for a nest than if you were to try and make it really tight. So once you have your, your donut started, you take your next page. 
and you use that to kind of keep it together. And you just shove it in there. My first one looked a little bit nicer than this, but you actually want it to stay up like this. So you don't want it to be too flattened. You also want to make sure that you have your, the, there should be some grooves in here so that the babies can cling onto things. Um, this is something that we do here. Uh, and if you want to learn how to make a nest at home, you can check out our next video with our education manager, Krista. She's going to have a couple of kids projects that you can do while you're all in quarantine at home and help keep everybody occupied and interested.